Hello and welcome to another lesson in electricity and in this lesson we will try to understand what exactly is resistance and what is resistivity. Well, to make it easier for us to understand this topic, we could draw an interesting comparison of flow of electricity with that of water flowing down a hill. So let us see how the flow of river changes as the conditions on the hill change. So here you have smooth flow of river from a higher elevation to lower elevation or from a place of higher gravitational potential to that of lower gravitational potential. Quite the same way electric current or the charges flow from a place of high electric potential to a place of low electric potential. So more the difference in elevation faster the flow of water and likewise more the difference in electric potential more the flow of charges or current. Now what if we had a lot of trees and rocks on the hill? Will the water flow as fast as it was earlier? No, it, it would not because the water will keep bumping against the trees and rocks that will slow down its flow. So you see, the flow of water is determined not only by the difference in potential, but also what is present in its path of flow. Well, for electric current also, the flow of charges is determined not only by the potential difference, but by a property that is called the resistance of the wire that can slow down the motion of charges that form the current. So with this simple analogy at the back of our mind, and you got to remember this is just an analogy and do not stretch the comparison too far. So if you were to apply the same potential difference between ends of two wires made of different material, but having the same length and area of cross section, we will get different current values passing through each wire and the difference in these values is because of the characteristics of material of each wire. One wire causes more resistance to the movement of the charge carriers than the other causing a lower value of current for a given potential difference. And it's actually quite easy to find the resistance of each wire. All we need to do is measure the current flowing through the wire when a potential difference V is applied across the ends. And let us say this current value is I. Then we can say that the resistance of the wire is R is equal to V upon I. And you can see that this has units of volt per ampere and we call it ohm using this as a symbol or we could say one ohm is equal to one volt per ampere and a piece of conductor that may be used in a circuit to provide a specific resistance is called a resistor and shown by a symbol like this. Okay, now let us rewrite this equation as I is equal to V upon R. Then we can say that for a certain applied potential difference V, more current will flow if the resistance is low and less current will flow if resistance is high. Well, this seems quite natural. That is the charge flow will be faster if there is less resistance and if charge flow is high, current would be high as well. But then what was found was that the resistance of a wire also changes if you increase the length of the wire. So longer the length, more the struggle for the charges to move through it and more the resistance. Further, it was found that the cross-sectional area of the wire also has a role to play in determining the value of resistance. A larger cross-sectional area would help the charges to move a lot easier compared to an area that is small and say constricted. Hence, large cross-sectional area means lower resistance. So to sum up, what we can say is that if you are given a wire made of certain material, then the wire will have different resistance depending on its length and the area of cross-section. So let us try to find a quantity that would be fixed for a material irrespective of its geometric shape. 
Well, based on what we have discussed so far, we can write that resistance of a material is directly proportional to length and inversely proportional to the cross-sectional area of the wire. Then if we think about what material is the wire made of, we can introduce a constant called resistivity that represents the characteristic of the material of the wire. Resistivity is what allows or say disallows free movement of charge through the wire. We could compare the situation with water flowing in a pipe and if the pipe is totally clean, the flow of water would be fast. But if there are pebbles, stones and say uh, pieces of cotton stuffed inside, the flow would become slow. Likewise, the material of the wire could have impurities and ions of the material itself that slow down the movement of the charges. So we say higher the resistivity of a material, more the resistance. And so finally, we define resistance of a wire as R is equal to rho L by A. Now here you can see resistivity is characteristic of a material and remains the same for any size and shape of a given material but resistance of course changes with shape and size of the wire. More formally we could define resistivity of a material as electrical resistance of a conductor of unit cross-sectional area and unit length because if you put unit value for L and A what you get is the resistance value for that dimension. So resistivity you see is property of the material much like say density uh, that is having 90 grams of water in a cylinder or 300 grams of it in a cube does not change its density. In either case, density of water, that is mass per unit volume, remains the same at one gram per cubic centimeter. So rho is a fundamental property of the material like density, melting point, etc. Well, we just derived the relationship between resistance, length, area and resistivity in a slightly intuitive way. Let us try to do the same derivation taking a different approach which I'd say is also quite simple. So we define resistance R of a resistor as equal to V upon I. But what if we were to focus on a point on this resistor? Then rather than using potential difference across the resistor, we use electric field E at that point. So instead of saying that the potential difference V is driving the flow of charge between these two points, now we are saying electric field E is pushing the charge at this point. Then in the denominator, we can take current density J at this point rather than the entire current through the resistor. In that case, what we get is resistivity rho on the left hand side instead of resistance. And considering resistivity is a material property and a constant, we can say higher the resistivity of a material, higher the electric field required to create charge density J. Or in simpler words, more electric force is required to move charges at a point because the resistivity of the material does not allow easy movement of charges. So. Theoretically, you could say that if you have a perfect conductor, its resistivity should be zero. And if it is a perfect insulator, its resistivity should be infinite. So metals, you could say, are good conductors and are more towards the left hand side and therefore widely used in wires used for conducting current. On the other hand, insulators like ceramics and plastics will fall on the right hand side of this line. Now let us break down this equation further and say the length of the wire is L and the area of cross section is A and if we assume current density to be uniform across the wire we can write E is equal to V upon L and J is equal to I upon A. Then if you put these in this equation what we get is rho is equal to V upon L by I upon a. 
that equals V A upon I L. But we know that V upon I is resistance of the wire, then what we get is rho is equal to R A upon L or R is equal to rho L upon A. Let us also make a quick assessment of how resistivity of a material changes with temperature because we know that most fundamental properties change with temperature and resistivity is quite the same that way. So what has been found empirically that is as a result of several experiments is that the relationship of resistivity with temperature is linear for several metals and can be written as rho minus rho naught is equal to rho naught alpha into T minus T naught. Here T naught is the reference temperature often taken as 293 Kelvin and rho naught is the corresponding resistivity at 293 Kelvin and alpha here is a temperature coefficient of resistivity and the value is taken in such a way that the equation gives good agreement with experiment for temperatures in the chosen range. So for most problems, you'll have these values available for you to solve. Now, while resistivity is a material characteristic that determines resistance to current flow, the reciprocal of this value represents the conductivity of the material or its ability to let the charge flow and conductivity of a material is shown by the symbol sigma. So we can say larger the resistivity of a material, lower the conductivity and lower the resistivity, higher the conductivity. As an example, we could take copper that has a resistivity of 1.68 into 10 to the power minus 8 ohm meter, which is very, very low. And if you take its reciprocal, what you get is 5.96 into 10 to the power 7 that is very very high essentially indicating that it has very high conductivity and that is precisely the reason why copper is used in making electric wires because it helps easy movement of electrons and therefore the current through the length of the wire so if you like the video do give it a thumbs up share it with someone or just post a comment and Yes, don't forget to ring the bell below to get notifications when I publish a new video.